Deverly Baldwin, and I'm with one of my favorite people, Jim Bishop, a horticulturist, garden designer, past president of the San Diego Horticultural Society, and owner of one of the finest gardens in all of San Diego. Jim's garden has been in all of my books, and Jim's going to give us a tour of the garden today. Well, we've been gardening here for about 20 years, a little bit more than 20 years, and um, the succulent thing came late. Um, it was not the original intention, and it kind of took over, and um, a little bit before people were into succulents, and then Deborah showed up for <laughs> writing about our house one day, I yeah. believe it was, and I noticed she took pictures of all the potted succulents, which had nothing to do with the house, and that kind of put me off onto putting more there. And then the other issue is um, we have very little space out here, and this space is due south, and I had a, I had a traditional plants, roses and other things, and they all died in the winter because uh -huh. the sun was so intense against the white wall, and I stumbled into succulents doing fairly well out here. Um, and then the courtyard and a lot of our areas around the house is um, uh, brick, Oh. and tile, uh -huh. and so everything has to be in pots. And oh. it's hard to keep other things alive in pots, and one by one all the pots became something else. Well, how large is the uh, property? It's just a little under one acre, a but it's 100 feet elevation. From where we're standing right now to the very bottom is 100 feet lower. Yeah. So basically 10 stories. And there's, Ten. Well, there's well over 300 steps in the garden, which we put in all of our stuff. A significantly wonderful part of this is the setting. The architecture, the Spanish colonial architecture with Moroccan overtones, which was remodeled by Mark Terrasic, architect here in San Diego, and I think that's how we first met. Yes. Yes, because I did an article about it for San Diego Home Garden. It was a 1938 house, uh, sort of a hacienda style house. We've been very careful to keep a very strong 1930s as Deborah was mentioning, though, um, and I know she's got some ties with San Miguel de Allende. Yeah. San Miguel de Allende is our patron saint of our house, and this oh. tile is from San Miguel. When I think of your place, Jim, I think of distinct areas of the garden. The street side garden, the inner courtyard patio garden, where we're in now. Then you have the deck garden. We call that the veranda. That's the largest flat spot on our property, actually. Is it really? Yeah, it's surprising. So when we entertain large groups, that's where we usually serve wine and stuff because there's not room to stand up here. <laughs> and then uh, the casita. The casita, which is the walled garden also. And then the slope garden, the terraced garden. Yeah, and that has multiple rooms, yeah. And it changes based on the climate because I'm in a fog belt here at the top, a heavy fog belt, and so the northwest corner of our property gets pretty heavy dense fog and I have a lot of problems with succulents actually rotting facing that, oh. even though it's very it's also very sunny, but things can sit in fog for a week or two at a time and drip every night and, and a lot of rosettes don't like that water dripping into their center and it rots in that. Like a good gardener, you are very well aware of your microclimates your orientation to the sun. Right. It's more than just an aesthetic adventure. It's also where the plants are happy. Well, and, and the wall up here, which has got a lot of tillandsies in it, the, one of the major reasons for that was because of the fog and the air blows through that very nice in the summer. Mm -hmm. And it faces north, so it doesn't get full sun, but it gets bright light, which is exactly what they like. I've always liked this uh, planted brick wall. And I've always intended to get it totally covered. This is a nice bonsai uh, jade. And you know what? I never trimmed it ever. It I, trims it, itself, doesn't yeah, it? I drop, yeah, it drops branches and it's blooming. And the uh, iron mariachi, four or five of them in the garden. This is uh, the veranda. The veranda. Yeah. This was actually here when we bought our house. It's, it's about 1,200 square feet. It's quite large. You wouldn't guess that. And the tile was here, but a lot of the tile had worn out. So wherever the tile was worn out, I. Yeah, I jackhammered it out and put in um, my tile samples that were left over from things that never happened. <laughs> but it kind of worked. It's total shade for two months of the year, and then the opposite problem in the summer is total sun for two months. It's a little northwest. And uh, so my, uh, I have an agave collection over here. There's about 35 species of agaves. And I've got a few other things mixed in. Oh, and an interesting story, the tile over here on the wall was in Deborah's first book. And she took a picture of this area. 
And when I saw the picture in the book, it was a variety of succulents, and I thought, the star needs to be emphasized. That pattern needs to repeat more. It's in the very center of your book. It's two pages, and it has like some some other succulents. I don't even remember what they were, but it really needed the, the repetition of the star. It's one of my best photos for talking about repetition. Cobalt. Colors, Ooh. yes. Yeah. And we've since added the cows, which I, I love. So, on to... Yeah, let's go down. some of the inspiration. This is where the pool was. Yeah, it was from about where we're standing all the way down to the tower. It was 40 feet long and 11 feet deep. And it was the world's coldest swimming pool because on the north side of the house with ocean fog. We've had enough rain that it's flushed the salt out of the soil, so the moss is much happier. It really makes them look old. I mean, I could scrape it off, but I love the old soil. It's even on this wall. It sure is. Yeah. And so that tells you we're north of it. Somebody left this at a Rakes and Blades meeting at my house in Encinitas 30-some years ago in a three-inch pot. <laughs> and then the woman around the corner gave me all her rosé bottles. And then I got another friend who gives me the blue Budweiser bottles. <laughs> That's right. Your garden is known for its bottles. Oh, yeah, there's over 10,000. Well, we'll see eventually. I got all the way to the bottom to get to the sunniest spot. Not at the sunniest and warmest spot is at the very, very bottom of the garden. Years to continue terracing your way down. Yeah, we've only been working on the bottom of the hill um, for about four years, but it looks like it's been there forever. 